And our word for today on this Thursday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time, this Thursday, July the 6th, our word for today is rise. Rise is our word for today, our reading from the 22nd chapter of the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer up, offer him up as a burnt offering on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the burnt offering, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, he said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the burnt offering. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son, but the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yira. Hence, people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord that because you acted as you did and not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. Abraham then returned to his servants and they set out together for Bathsheba, where Abraham made his home. Our responsorial psalm, Psalm 115, I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your kindness, because of your truth. Why should the pagans say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, their handiwork of men. They have mouths, but speak not. They have eyes, but see not. They have ears, but hear not. They have noses, but smell not. Their makers shall be like them, everyone who trusts in them. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, Alleluia. Our gospel today is from Matthew chapter 9. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe and glorified God, who had given such authority to men. Mm. Rise, our word for today, our Holy Father's thoughts regarding today's gospel reading. These he shared at his general audience on August the 5th, uh, August the 5th of 2020. 
What a wonderful example of healing. Christ's action is a, is a direct response to the faith of those people, to the hope that they put in him, to the love they show him, that they and the love they have for each other. And so Jesus heals, but he does not simply heal the paralysis. Jesus heals everyone. He forgives sins. He renews the life of the paralyzed man and his friend. He makes him born again. Let's say it that way. He makes him born again. It is a physical and spiritual healing altogether, the fruit of personal and social contact. Let's imagine how this friendship and the faith of all those present in that house would have grown thanks to Jesus' action, that healing encounter with Jesus. And so we can ask ourselves today, in what way can we help heal our world? As disciples of the Lord Jesus, who is the physician of our souls and bodies, we are called to continue His work, work of healing and of salvation. As disciples of the Lord Jesus, who is the physician of our souls and bodies, we are called to continue His work, work of healing and of salvation. Rise our word for today, obviously taken from our gospel reading today, where Jesus' encounter with a paralytic ends with him saying, Rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. And the man rose and went home. But not after this discourse about what is greater, the healing of the body or the healing of the soul, the healing of a uh, paralyzed man or the forgiveness of his sins. And obviously the greater of those two things is the forgiveness of his sins. And yet the miracles drove so many to hear these words and to encounter Jesus in a personal way during his sojourn on this earth but also to encounter him in a different way after the Spirit came and was made present to each of us, stirring up in our hearts and minds everything that Jesus had said and then explaining to us what it meant. So the greater conversion was not while Jesus was walking the planet. In fact, very, very few people converted to Jesus during the time when he walked the planet. <laughs> they all left him. The conversion came when the Holy Spirit came to dwell in our hearts and minds that he might reveal all things to us. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Rise our word for today, but I would say that there is evidence, I think there's clear evidence that the Holy Spirit was working in the life, not in the heart and mind of, but in the life of Abraham in the 22nd uh, chapter of the book of Genesis today in our story from today. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then the Lord said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a burnt offering on a height that I will point out to you. What? <laughs> this is the request, not misunderstood, by the way, very clearly stated. God asks Abraham to do this. I find it very interesting because Abraham gets up the next morning, he saddles his donkey and he takes with him his son Isaac and two of his servants, along with the wood and the fire, which is needed for the sacrifice. On the third day of journey, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, he said to his servants this, both of you servants stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. We will worship and then come back to you. Abraham knew what was being asked of him. And yet he proclaims to the servants, we're going over to worship over there and then we are coming back. How in the world could Abraham think that Isaac is coming back if he is willing to sacrifice him on the wood? In the fire. Because something was being stirred up in Abraham that believed that God would be faithful to raise up his son. That somehow, even after this sacrifice, Isaac would be with him. But he had to do what the Lord was asking him to do. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son's Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. Why did he have Isaac carry the wood and he carries the knife and the fire? Because Isaac was not a baby. <laughs> Isaac was not a seven-year-old. Isaac was probably a teenage strong young man. And he was the one most capable of carrying the wood. 
So Abraham is not carrying a baby up this mountain to sacrifice him. He is taking nearly a full-grown person who is stronger than him up this mountain. And what is he explaining to him? He's having to talk to him because Abraham is not going to be able to subdue Isaac and tie him up and lay him on wood. Isaac is going to have to be willing to do it. Isaac is going to have to be willing to be that sacrifice. And how is Abraham explaining this to him? I would assume he's explaining it to him in the same way that he is understanding it. We are going to go through with this, but we trust that God will make it right. We trust that at the end of the day, he will raise you up and will have you back better than before. So Isaac submits to this. He willingly submits to this. And his father ties him up and lays him on the wood and makes the offering of his only son. Take your son, God says, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a burnt offering on a height that I will point out to you. And as Abraham is willing, and in fact as Isaac is willing, we have to acknowledge Isaac is the willing participant in this, as they are willing, God stops it all and says, thank you. Now, through this test, I know how much you love me. Now, let me show you how much I love you. I will ask the same thing of my own son. Isaac was willing to do it for you, Abraham, and do it out of love for me. I will ask the same thing of my own son, Jesus, except we won't stop the sacrifice. The sacrifice will take place for your benefit. You did this and it is it is an expression of your love for me, Abraham, that you are willing to do this as an expression of my love for you, my fidelity to you, my promise to you. I will ask my own son to lay down his life as a sacrifice for all of mankind and he will do it and he will follow through with it and in the doing of that thing, you will be made free. And then I will raise him up. I will raise him up and he will rise. Just as you thought Isaac might if you lay, if you sacrificed him today. As Jesus caused the paralyzed man forward to rise. So he himself would rise later and make us all free. He would be the healing for us all. He would take away our paralysis. He would take away our deafness. He would take away our blindness. And he would raise it all up in us if we are willing to follow his command, the very simple command, rise and walk. Let us take up our mats and rise and walk today in celebration of the freedom that we have in Christ and that we might go forward and proclaim it to everyone we have the opportunity to share this good news with because the Lord has called us to rise and walk. Rise, our word for today.